you can't take it with you when you go Can't understand why you keep holding on Just cause you can't take it with you No, you can't take it with you Yes, you can't take it with you when you go Inna alhamdulillah Na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'afiru Wa na'udhu billahi min shurur yanfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihi Allah falamudillala Wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين وبعد The topic إن شاء الله that uh, brothers have asked me to talk about is the ultimate pension plan uh, I don't know if you already have a plan but uh, this one is supposed to be ultimate right <laughs> Uh, who, who has a pension plan anyway? Anybody have a pension plan here? Uh, a couple of people. Huh? Obviously the young don't think about it. But uh, it's something to think about anyway. And this is, especially in, uh, in this society, when people are uh, worried about their finances, and especially worried about when they get old, and what's going to happen to them when they are old. And Alhamdulillah, this is where you know, the difference comes in between us Muslims and others besides us. Alhamdulillah. Uh, being Muslim means we have that tawakkul in Allah Azza wa Jal, and that we have this reliance on Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and that we don't worry about our risk. We shouldn't worry about our risk as long as we take the uh, necessary efforts, make the necessary, uh, take the necessary actions to earn our risk. Then Alhamdulillah, the rest of it is reliance on Allah Azza wa Jal. But when you don't have that iman and when you don't have that knowledge that someone is there to provide for you, then of course you're always riskophobic. You're always worried about your risk. You're always worried about where your money is coming from. And so this is really a ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jal that we have this reassurance, we have something to rely upon Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. So for non-Muslims it's always a concern about where wages are coming from, where money is coming from, what's going to happen to them when they're old, uh, well, how are they going to survive once they retire. And of course, uh, if they followed the guidance of Islam and they had children, and they raised those children as Muslims, then of course your children will take care of you, right? And this is alhamdulillah, and this is also something that we need to uh, take care of ourselves as well. Our children are part of our future. And if we raise them, inshallah, according to the guidance of Al-Islam, and we treat them well, inshallah they will treat us well in our old age, and they will take care of us after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't really be, need to be overly concerned about what's going to happen in old age as long as we have this reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also, for people who are concerned, there should be a greater concern as well. When you get old, fair enough, you may live uh, after retirement, you know, from 65, 10 years, 20 years even, right, a few years. But what happens after that? Who has prepared for that stage of life? You've got your pension, you've spent it, and then you go to your grave. What's going to happen to you after that? This is what my, inshallah, the aim of my talk is about. Inshallah, you'll hear from the speakers after me how to invest for the dunya, and inshallah, which will benefit you in your akhirah as well. But the aim of my topic is to save for the akhirah by investing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To save for the akhirah by investing with Allah azza wa jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us, tells us, to think about that time. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. We all hear this ayah, right? From Surah Al-Hashr. Allah Azza wa Jal tells all you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amunu attaqullaha have taqwa of Allah Azza wa Jal by fulfilling his obligations and keeping away from the prohibitions and remembering him and thanking him and obeying him. This is all part of taqwa. And then, wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad. Look at, let the soul look at what it has put forward for itself for tomorrow, the hereafter. What have we put forward for ourselves for tomorrow? This is the balance that we need to have a look at ourselves. This is the, the muhasaba. So take account of yourself. We all, perhaps if you have a bank account, each month you get a statement and it tells you how much has come in, how much has gone out, how much you have left or how much you may have overspent and perhaps fall into riba as a result. Okay? But what about the balance with Allah? How often have we checked 
our balance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where do we stand? Are we in credit or in, in debit? Uh, excuse me for using this money terms, but uh, people connect to this. So what is your balance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how much have you put forward for yourself with Allah azza wa jal? That again, like a statement that's presented to you about your financial account, you will get a statement about your life as well, your book. Every single thing is going to be listed, recorded. So how have we prepared for this? How have we, what have we saved for ourselves for the Akhirah? We may be saving for this life, but what are we saving for the Akhirah? What are we investing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what do we expect? What kind of returns do we expect from Allah azza wa jal? So inshallah, hopefully I will touch on some of this. Let me start with, first of all, a little bit about wealth, money. It's something that all of us like, all of us want. No problem with that. It can be a ni'mah from Allah Azza wa Jal. Wealth is a ni'mah from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. But at the same time, it can also be a fitna. It can also be a fitna. How is it a ni'mah? A ni'mah if you acquire it in the way that is lawful, you earn it in a halal way, through work, through trade, through business, whatever it may be, and then you spend it in the correct way, by first of all giving the zakah that's necessary to be given, spending on your family, spending on yourself, spending on relatives, and then after that spending on the good things that Allah uh, provides for us. This is all ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah has blessed you with something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes to see that ni'mah upon us. So that's all good. But on the other hand, wealth is also a fitna. And perhaps most people fall into the fitna side rather than the ni'mah side. They fall into the fitna of wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned us of this fitna. fitna. As Allah just says, fitna. That indeed your wealth and your children are a fitna. A trial, a test from Allah uh, to see who is going to obey Allah with regard to these things. The wealth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Are you going to spend it in the way things that Allah wants you to spend it? Or are you going to waste it? Or worse still, are you going to spend it in being ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spending in haram, or supporting the causes of haram through your wealth? Fitnatul wealth. And also, Allah Azawajal, in another ayah, what did he say? Ya ayyuhal hadhina amanu, la tulhikum amwalukum, wa la awladukum an dhikrillah. O you who believe, don't let your wealth, your amwal, and your awlad, your children, these are two, thing, two things that people love most. Okay? Wealth and children. But don't let these two things distract you from the dhikr of Allah Azawajal. That's when it becomes a fitna. If they turn you away from Allah Azawajal, your children, who are a blessing, who can be a blessing, but if they turn you away from Allah Azawajal, then they are a fitna for you. If you're spending all your time, all your efforts, trying to provide for your children, and you forget yourself, and you forget your ibadah of Allah Azawajal, then they become a fitna. This is not what Allah Azawajal wants from you. There has to be a balance. And if your wealth that Allah Azawajal bests you with, again, turns you away from Allah, distracts you from your duties to Allah Azawajal, and diverts you away from your cause and your purpose in life, then it is a fitna. And what's the end result? Those who do this, they are the losers. People want to profit from their money. They want to profit. They want to uh, achieve something. But ultimately, if it distracts them and takes them away from Allah Azawajal, then that is loss. There's no gain in this at all. And the real losers are who? And who are the real losers in Yawm Al-Qiyamah? Those who lose themselves and lose their families. So brothers, the wealth and sisters, is something, a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this wealth, if it's not used 
in the right way and it's not used for the right cause,